Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Before I get started, I'm going to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon because that's the only way you will know for sure when I upload new videos. Now let's start with this uh, small ESP32 based development board. It has a built-in 1.14 inch color TFT LCD and I think that's a nice feature of this uh, dev board because if you want to connect some sensors and see the readings in real time you don't need to wire a display externally, it's built in, it's also super useful for debug purposes. Another cool feature is that we have a uh, built-in battery charging circuit which is set for 500 milliamps and you can power this board through the uh, provided 2-pin JST uh, connector with a 1-cell LiPo battery which will then charge when connected to a power via the USB Type-C port. There is also a uh, CP2104 in here for the USB to serial conversion and that makes it a pretty well balanced development board for the uh, ESP32. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils so it's definitely worth checking them out. The board comes loaded with a uh, test program from TTGO. It shows this image then uh, cycles through red, uh, blue and green on the LCD which is a good idea because you can verify the board is functioning okay after the long journey it takes from the market in Shenzhen to your door and we all know how well these uh, packages are protected during shipping. My next item is probably the smallest color display you can currently get on AliExpress. It's a whopping 0.6 inch 64 by 64 pixels OLED screen. It has the SSD 1357 display control built in and the interface is 4 wire SPI uh, through this uh, 20 pin flat flex connection. The pin pitch on this uh, is 0.5 millimeters and you can find the mating SMD connectors easily with top or bottom contact depending on how you plan to assemble this uh, display. And they're fairly inexpensive for $3 you can get a set of 10 and I ordered some myself but they just haven't arrived yet. Now it's such a small screen you're not going to print your debug info but we can certainly think of some other applications where this could be used nicely. For example, I'm thinking smart switches that have one of these built-in displays to show the status of the user right on the switch. I'm also thinking this could be used for building some kind of display matrix by using many of these, but they're, they are kind of expensive, so a matrix of let's say 64 by 64 uh, would total 4096 pixels, and let's say you could get the price down to $3 in quantity, you would have to pay over $12 thousand dollars for that panel so personally i think i'm gonna stick to one-off quantities for these uh, displays next up i have some battery insulating gaskets and these are sized specifically for the 18650 cells and if you ever open a pack of those or build one yourself you've seen the nickel strips which get spot welded to the end of the cells well, those nickel strips, especially on the positive side, they run right across the negative shell of the battery and the only separation is the thin PVC insulation which wraps the cell. So a good solution to the problem is to add one of these uh, paper insulating uh, gaskets between the nickel strip and the body of the cell at the positive side. Now I'm thinking this is not ordinary paper, this is a um, uh, green color which you see commonly used for insulating paper and Ideally, this would be fire retardant, so in case something gets very hot, it doesn't catch fire. You can also get this type of paper in large rolls that you can cut to size, so after finishing a pack, you could seal the entire connection side with a uh, bigger patch of this uh, paper. As usual, you'll find the link to this in the description below the video. Next up I have a set of these uh, webcam privacy covers and these are small covers which you can attach on top of uh, existing uh, laptop webcam and with a, a simple slide mechanism you physically block the uh, webcam because well in a world where dangerous uh, uh, hacking exploits uh, can be easily obtained from various places on the dark web you can never be too certain on your privacy. 
The majority of laptops, if not all, do not feature a hard switch for turning off the webcam and what's even more concerning, the LED signaling, if the webcam is on or not, is usually softer controlled from a microcontroller which could in theory be hacked to be off web even when the webcam is on. Modern laptops have started integrating these covers into the screen bezel, but if you've got an older model, you can attach one of these, which is really inexpensive. Next, I have some W16 automotive LED bulbs, and uh, the ones on the left are orange for turn signal, and uh, the ones on the right are white, so you could use these for reverse lights, for example. They both feature this uh, intricate design with several PCBs soldered together in this shape and multiple LEDs. They both feature a uh, step down DC to DC converter as well as a bridge rectifier on the input which helps because it doesn't matter which way you plug this into the socket, it will work either way. The quality of these is not great but it's not terrible either, it's somewhat average. Typically the weak point of these bolts are the LED themselves which tend to age and sometimes die because of insufficient cooling and possibly also lower quality grade of the emitters to start with. The main reason you would use something like this is for higher light output and personally I also like the fact that they turn on or off instantly especially on the turn signal. I still have a plan to design my own bulbs and try to make them better by using reliable components and better cooling to ensure a higher lifespan for the LEDs, but so far I've been pretty busy and unable to start that project. Hopefully things are going to change soon and I'll uh, dedicate more time to building these projects. There is one thing to consider when buying these. Uh, if your car has a sensitive bulb detection circuitry, it might throw a bulb out error for these LEDs because they will take less power than a normal incandescent bulb. Sometimes it's possible to tick that via the OBD port, but certainly not applicable to all makes and models. Next up, I got myself a selection of these uh, keychain embroidered tags. I'll probably hang these on my backpack or the big luggage that I take with me on long trips. These should be super useful for spotting my particular luggage on the treadmill at the airport out of hundreds of others which look alike. And let's face it, it's going to add some bling factor. I like this one with um, engineer, this of course refers to an airplane engineer which is something you rarely find these days on airplanes because all systems are uh, electronically monitored and controlled. I think you can also order a custom made one, so maybe I'll get one made with vault log written on it. But if you want one of these, you can check out the links in the description below the video. Next up I got a set of these 12 volt cigarette lighter connectors because I need to fix something which uh, had one of these connectors that failed. They're not super high quality but for the price they uh, seem to be good enough. I'm not going to complain. I've uh, looked at other models available online and this uh, style seems to be better so I'd recommend you go for this style with uh, the uh, connector which has the small 3mm LED on the side as well as a fused positive input pin. You can unscrew this and inside you will find a uh, 10 amp glass fuse. Now 10 amp might be a bit too much for your setup so make sure you change this to the appropriate value. Next I got this attachment compatible with a uh, 936 soldering iron handle. It basically allows you to add a uh, cutting blade to the soldering iron and I've always wanted to do this in the past. I had to resort to hacking a blade and strapping it with some copper wire to an old soldering iron to obtain a hot blade to cut into plastic or foam. The seller was also offering some blades for this but I opted for just the um, attachment head because I think this will work with any cutting blades that I already have so let's check if that's possible. First we need to remove this and install it on the soldering iron. And yeah, it's possible to use these uh, blades that you use for the hobby knife and uh, they work just fine. But if you don't have any of these, you can order some from the same seller. Ideally, you would attach this to a temperature controlled soldering iron because you don't want the temperature to be so high that it burns the plastic or the foam, just high enough so it melts through the uh, plastic. Like I said, 
This would have been super useful years ago when I was building a bunch of projects and fitting them within plastic enclosure, but still, even today, I think I'm going to use this, uh, for example, on my RC planes if I want to cut out some slots into the foam to insert different modules, this would be a great tool for that job. Next, I have this uh, valve service kit which includes four tire valves, four valve caps and one disassembling tool which is like a short screwdriver with a split end. This is useful to keep in your car together with the other tools you have for the spare wheel and the portable air compressor. It doesn't happen very often but I once had a problem with a tire valve and I could have fixed it myself with one of these kits instead of driving to the tire shop where there was a line and I had to wait. My next item is a wireless charging pad from BaseUS and this one in particular is capable of up to 7.5 watts of charging power so that's like quick charge over um, wireless charging and features the quick charge protocol on the input port uh, which is super important if you plan to have this at more than one meter away from the power brick. I don't know if I mentioned this but when I first got one of these uh, wireless chargers and connected it via a 2 meter USB cable to the actual USB power brick I was getting about 4.5 volts at the other end and the charging kept restarting as the current increased, the voltage decreased and so on. I was basically unable to use it. So I switched to a quick charge compatible USB power adapter. The wireless charging brick immediately neg negotiated to uh, 9 volts, which means a lower current over the long line and more efficient transmission. You've seen me purchase products from BaseUS before, I think they're excellent value for money, they have nice design and good build quality. For example, I already have one of these chargers and it's been running non-stop for almost two years without any issues. I also have a bunch of USB cables from BaseUS and they've all been working nicely, they're fairly resistant to wear and in fact I've ordered a few more uh, for uh, friends and family. Uh, because it's Christmas and it's that time of the year where my family uh, gets new USB charging cables because that's what you get for having an electronics engineer family member. No chocolate for you. So this is a 2 meter USB to lighting um, charging cable for iPhones, iPads, etc. It has this uh, braided textile wrap uh, which feels uh, really nice and high quality. The next one is a USB Type-C 2 meter charging cable. This is rubber coated and it's pretty thick but still feels nice, soft and uh, high quality. Uh, this is slightly thicker than the uh, lightning cable I showed earlier but uh, that is because it's capable of up to 5 amps over USB Type-C. And last I have another lighting cable, uh, this one has a 90 degree bend on the lighting calendar and it's about 1 meter in length uh, with uh, a camo braided coating. This is great for short distances like the ones you have in your car from the charging socket up to the phone. That was all for today, I hope you found something interesting in this video, if you did let me know in the comments below and I would also really appreciate a thumbs up or maybe your support over on Patreon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.